Hey, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to the Morning Devo with Bo O. Hope you guys are doing well this morning. December 14th, getting close to Christmas. And that means, I don't know what that means, actually, but we are getting close to Christmas. <laughs> but it, it's always a fun, uh, can be a real fun time. Also a real sad time for a lot of people as well. So we kind of remember that as uh, too, that uh, this isn't always a joyful occasion for everybody. Both of my parents, by the way, did pass away in November. So uh, Thanksgiving is always an interesting time for me because both my parents died on you know one side of that holiday. And um, anyway, so welcome to the morning devotion uh, that I do every morning, usually Monday through Friday, around 8 to 9 o'clock. Today I'm in late simply because I actually went to the gym. Um, and uh, yeah, Sylvia met me there and it was great. Uh, we were up real early. She had to get to work. And, and anyway, we ended up going to the gym. It was very cool. Remember that we have our Christmas Eve services coming up Sunday, 9, 11, and 6 o'clock. 9, 11, 6 o'clock, 9, 11, 6. 9-11-6, 9-11-6. Just remember that. So Christmas Eve service is going to be different from the morning services as well. So again, the Christmas Eve service, the 6 o'clock p.m. service is going to be different from the a.m. services on Sunday. So just so you know, and I hope to be playing some of my classical guitars uh, in uh, that evening. So 6 o'clock, I'll probably start playing at around 5.30 and uh, should be cool. I always enjoy playing some classical music before we get the kind of show on the road, so to speak. So Psalm 109, let's kind of get into this. We got a lot going in our world and we always have a lot of reality checks in the Psalms. So these Psalms are songs and as all good songs, they have some killer lyrics in them. Super awesome. So many, uh, you know, what we call secular music can remind us of the Psalms. Actually. Um, it's interesting. Sometimes people go, I don't listen to any secular songs because of the lyrics, which is really interesting, uh, kind of idea. I understand it. I totally get it. You know, you don't want to be brought down, but a lot of times when we read the Psalms, we got to understand these Hebrew lyrics, these songs from Jewish people are pretty real. And that means they're really sad. They de- can be very depressing on the verge of death, crying out to God, uh, actually like, where is God? Why doesn't he respond to our prayers? We see a lot of that. We see a lot of uh, hate for enemies in the lyrics, right? Uh, crush them, deal with them. You know, may their teeth be bashed into the ground. I mean, it's just really intense. So it, it's kind of interesting. Sometimes when we think about the Bible, we somehow have this idea. And I used to, when I was a progressive, um, you know, kind of very agnostic, um, you know, atheistic kid, really, just did not believe in God. Um, you know, I, I tended to have this idea idea that the Bible was kind of this fairy tale book. It was a book that you really couldn't relate to that, uh, um, you know, it was kind of all lilies in the grass kind of feel. Um, I had no do idea that it was, it was the real stuff. It was talking about real life. And, uh, and I always used to, you know, think that my lyrics to my songs were like intense. But when I read these lyrics, I go, wow, that's pretty intense. So another, it's another thing that a lot of us get wrong when we approach the Bible. We just don't know the Bible. So we don't realize that the Bible is filled with reality, emotional reality. And so God is addressed in many different ways in the Psalms. I was just reading about another one. I forget. I was, I wrote it somewhere, but um, yeah, there's all these different ways. He's father, he's judge, he's, you know, he's a shepherd. He's all these different ideas. And so let's get into 109. It says, Oh God, whom I praise, don't stand silent and aloof. Isn't that great? Hey, God, why don't stand all far away. Don't be so distant. Why don't you say something? Why don't you do something? God, don't stand so silent and far away. Hey, tell God what you really think of him, right? Again, a lot of times we attribute these kind of lyrics to what we call a secular song. But here you see it's really addressed to the Lord, right? It says, while the wicked slander me and tell lies about me, they surround me with hateful words and fight against me for no reason. So what I get from my devotion this morning is, do I talk about people in the wrong way? 
Do I slander people? Mm. Do I slander them? Have I gone off of someone, someone's information that they told me about something and I've trusted them and never investigated to whether that really is the case? You know, think about it. Has someone told you something that you trusted it without really investigating if that is the case? And the answer sometimes is, yeah, right? And we have to be careful, right? We're not to show favoritism. Isn't that interesting? Oh, but that person's related to me. Mm. Careful, right? Don't show favoritism. We have to be careful about that. Now, you know, I, I understand that we want to, like, sympathize with our loved ones who are telling us what's going on. And yeah, that's and we, but we can't in our in a in a in in other ourselves go into a, a, a personal judgment towards that person. What we want to do is maybe establish every word. Maybe have another meeting. You can be a part of it. Establish the word of what really was said or what wasn't said or how the how the the current talk is going, and then assess the situation. But that way, you know, you know firsthand. So we have to be careful. Sometimes we have to make decisions based off what other people say about other people. And that and we, we go along with them. We we understand. But ourselves personally, we don't have like a, a we don't want to get into emotional investment with it. Uh, not a not above, you know, that emotional where it's moving us, right? Where we really don't know. And so lo and behold, we don't want to make too many decisions based off of what someone else might say. God, why do you stand aloof? Why do you stand so far away? Why the wicked slander me and tell lies about me? They surround me with hateful words and fight against me for no reason. Hmm. Sounds like, hey, he's pleading the fifth, right? I'm innocent, right? I haven't done anything wrong. I love them, but they try to destroy me with accusations, even though I'm praying for them. Oh, this is so good. How many of us are just like this in this situation? Oh, I love them. I love those people and I'm praying for them. I just, man, it's like, gosh, what a bummer that they're calling me that or saying that about me. Man, that's so true, right? Gosh, I mean, I just find that so powerful, right? I love them and they try to destroy me with accusations, right? Even as I'm praying for them. They repay me evil for good and hatred for my love. Oh, gosh, how sad is that where we try to love people? We try to care for them and just be gentle with them and understanding. But yet someone starts attacking us and calling us names and whatever it is. And oh, sorry, I got to stretch my neck. And, um, you know, that kind of thing. And that can be really sad. When it says send or it says they say get an evil person to turn against him, send an accuser to bring him to trial. Wow, that sounds like Jesus, right? This is a very Jesus passage right there. They say get an evil person to turn against him to send an accuser to bring him to trial. Doesn't that sound like Jesus's life, his trial, right? They heaped up accusers uh, to come in, liars and bear false witness of the Messiah, of the one who is going to come from Judah, right? When his case comes up for judgment, let him be, be pronounced guilty. Count his prayers as sins. Let his years be few. Let someone take his possession, position. May his children become fatherless and his wife is a widow. May his children wander as beggars and be driven from uh, their ruined homes. May creditors seize his entire estate and strangers take all that he has earned. Let no one be kind to him. Let no pity his fatherless. Let no one pity his fatherless children. May his offspring die. May his family name be blotted out in a single generation. May the Lord never forget the sins of his fathers. May his mother's sins never be erased from the record. May the Lord Lord, always remember these sins and may his name disappear from human memory. Hey, David, why don't you tell us really, really, you know, what you think about these people? <laughs> I love this. I'm praying for them. I love them. I care for them. We just got done that. And then what's the next thing? Wipe them out. Clean them out. Never forgive their sins. No grace, no mercy in their life. Strike them dead totally, completely. Do away with them. Put them in the dirt. Cover them up. 
be gone. If they pray to you, may their prayers be seen as sinful to your ears. Wow. Woo, David's letting it out. Oh, all that anger. He is just getting out. Oh, right? He knows he should love him. He knows he should be praying for him. He says, I'm praying for him. I love him. And they accuse me. And and then he just breaks out in some serious, serious wrath <laughs> against them. Have you ever felt like that where one minute you were kind of in control? You knew what Jesus told you to do. Hey, love your neighbor. Do good to those who despise you. You know, love your enemies. You know, that kind of idea. And you know that. But man, you just let it out, right? You let out all that anger that's in you. David lets it out to the Lord. Good person to let it out to. And what does he say? He says in verse 16, For he refused all kindness to others. He persecuted the poor and needy and hounded the brokenhearted to death. Oh, injustice. He was unjust to those in need. He didn't really think about them. He just went after them, tried to hurt them exploit them, coerce them. He loved to curse others. How you curse him, he never blessed others. Now don't bless him. Cursing is as natural to him as his clothing or the water he drinks or the rich food he eats. Now may his curses return and cling to him like clothing. May he be tied around him like a belt. Hmm. Cursing. Is cursing cling to me? Is it natural, like putting on clothes? Do I put on the nasty tongue? Is that how normal cussing is to me? Is it that kind of just flows out of me? You know, you go to, it's funny, you go to a university campus, and I kind of always like to go because it's fun. You get to see how people act. And, um, you know, it reminds me of me. It's just a reflection of me when I was at university. You just cuss, and you don't, you don't have any really reason to cuss, but you cuss because that's what people do. You become a, a just another one of, in a sense, kind of the puppets. You just do what everybody else is doing. And, you know, that's what I did. You just cuss because everybody uses that kind of vocab. So the F-bomb is always being used. Maybe maybe you remember when you were young, and maybe that's how you acted too. You know, you're hanging out with your friends, and you start hearing the F-bomb, and you start hearing the words being thrown around, and pretty soon you start kind of woo, loosening up a little bit, and you start getting that vocab going, and boom, 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 and F this, F that, and blah, 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 and starts going like that. It just And it starts sticking to you like your clothes, right? Like that kind of thing. And we start cursing other people out, right? You know, oh, that that leader, he's a bleep and bleep, right? He's a bleep, 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 bleep. Like, who are you? Who are you to tell, say that? You know, how good are you? You know, um, uh, see, it's a compare. The reason why we tear people down and cuss at them like that is because we have an insecurity in our own life, right? We think we're better. And the question is, is, how better are you? How much better do you think you are? And who are you comparing yourself to? Do you really know them? Do you, have you lived with them? Do you know like how they manage their money and what they do and how hard they work or uh, their ethics or anything like that? Probably not. Right? But the reason we do those things is because we're looking for a little security in our own right. And why? Because we too are clothed with a lot of yuck, right? We put on sins like they're just get up in the morning and we put it on. It becomes normal, right? And that's what's being described here in Psalm 109, the normality of our sins. It is part of us. It's part of the human race. But we can go judging others in unrighteous judgments all the time. And we do. And the better way is to judge righteously, to really have a humbled heart when we're judging others, knowing our own frailties 
and really understanding what we're judging and maybe a kind of behavior. And we understand what we're knowing that we too have our issues as well, but it doesn't negate the, uh, the need to say something's right or something's wrong. It's funny. People that are upset about saying if something's right or wrong, people go, oh, no, you can't say that. Well, they're telling us something's wrong. <laughs> it's weird. It's a giant contradiction at the university level, that's for sure. And so it says, verse 20, May those, those curses become the Lord's punishment for my accusers who speak evil of me, but deal well with me, O sovereign Lord. For your sake and your own reputation. Hey, deal with me, you know, according to your ways. You deal with me according to your reputation. Uphold your reputation, God, when you deal with me. Again, the focus is on God. God, you deal with me the way you need to deal with me that blesses you in the eyes of people. If you are seen as righteous in my life and however you need to deal with me, then you deal with that. Hmm. Wow, that's a a prayer of faith for sure. That's a song of faith. It says, um, rescue me because you are so faithful and good. I love that. Why do we need rescuing? Because he is so faithful and good. He is the stability. For I am poor and needy and my heart is full of pain. I am fading like a shadow at dusk. I am brushed off like a locust. My knees are weak from fasting and I am skin and bones. I am a joke to people everywhere and they see me and they shake their heads in scorn. Help me, O God. Save me because of your unfailing love. Let them see that this is your doing, that you yourself have done it, Lord. Let them, uh, then let them curse me if they like, but you will bless me. Hey, deal with me again the way you need to deal with me. What a great thing to say today. God, may you be seen as righteous. Again, it gets our eyes off of us, and it really gets our focus back on God's glory, God's name, God's fame, you know, God's character. God, you, may my concern be more about you than me. You know, even in the discipline, even in the trial, May you be the main concern. How I want me to be more concerned about how people see you. And think about it. Our world, a lot of people see God not in a good way. God, may you deal with me in a way that people see you clearly and correctly. Hmm. It's a, it's a different way of approaching our problems. So instead of being really man-centric, you know, looking at yourself, it's really about, you know, Christ-centric, really looking at God, the Messiah, right? The Son of God and, and wanting Him to be glorified, that kind of idea. And it says, um, and then it says, when they attack me, they will be disgraced, but I, your servant, will go right on rejoicing. May my accusers be dis- are clothed with disgrace. May their humiliation cover them like a cloak. But I will give pr- repeated thanks to the Lord, praising him to everyone, for he stands beside me, the needy, ready to save those who, c- uh, who condemn them. He's ready to save those who are condemned hmm. by the enemy. Wow. So very cool. God will be there for us even when we feel condemned. Even when our hearts condemn us, God is there for us. And it's interesting. In the New Testament, in the book of 1 John, there's this passage that says, even if our hearts condemn us, he is I think greater than our hearts. I think that's how it goes. He's greater than our hearts. It's in First John, like chapter five, four, somewhere in there. But um, it's kind of neat. It's like I wonder if John is thinking about Psalm 109, understanding that hey, you know what does it say? It says, "For he stands beside the needy, ready to save those who condemn them." There's things that condemn us, people that condemn us, and may you be there to save us. First John picks up on that. John does. And he says, hey, even if our hearts condemn us, you know, God is greater than our heart. And man, isn't that so good too? Even when your hearts condemn you, we have a lot of condemnation we can get into. But today, are you really walking in faith in the work of God for you? Where Jesus says, neither do I condemn you, go and sin no more. Or do I, you know, go, yeah, I'm... I, I'm walking in condemnation all the time, defeat all the time, you know, and that's something to, to just repent of, just to say, God, I, 
that's a wrong way of looking at life. I do not want to look at my life as someone who's condemned when you have said that you have set me free. Lord, if you have set me free, I want to, I want to uh, affirm what you've said, that you have set me free. Lord, help me to walk in that freedom that you've, uh, uh, you know, declared. You've won the victory. Let me walk in that victory. Help me to do that, Lord, even in my frailty, even in this body of, of sin. You know, help me to walk in victory. Help this body to live a resurrected life even today. So, man, a lot of cool stuff in this psalm. Like all these psalms, they're just so great. They're so good, and they're so filled with so much character qualities of God. His unfailing love is mentioned. His faithfulness is always mentioned. And up and that idea of, God, you get glory for your work in me. May people know you greater and better for how you deal with me in discipline, in blessing, However it is, Lord, I'm blessed to know that people see you in the right way. And that's awesome. Woo! What a cool psalm. And uh, Laura, Paula, I hope you guys enjoyed that and these others that check this out. What a psalm. Psalm 109, man, that was the stuff. So you guys take care, okay? Bye-bye.